Doctors, I'm going to address this question to both of you. There have to be some safety issues with the mangosteen. The first thing I'd like to say, Abby, is that one of the benefits of traditional medicine, medicine that has been used by cultures in various parts around the world, is that they use an herb or a fruit for century upon century, and it's passed down from family to family, that from record to record shows which fruits or herbs are helpful, which herbs or fruits are toxic or have harmful effects, and that there is not one documented case in any research that I've been able to uncover that demonstrates there's any type of uh, adverse or toxic property to the mangosteen fruit, the pericarpet seeds. I, I slipped on one on a, on a sidewalk <laughs> when I was in New Zealand, and that's about the closest I've come to seeing damage. Now, people can have allergic reactions to this fruit just like they can to any other kind of fruit, but in the reported reactions, they've been restricted to cutaneous, cutaneous uh, manifestations, nothing that is life-threatening. So it's not that people cannot have adverse reactions, but they aren't life-threatening. They, they don't fall into the same category as drugs do. And, you know, you just have to wonder, why would you ever use a drug which has the potential for disaster when a mangosteen or a fruit or some other edible element that is in nature could possibly give you the same kind of an effect? That's the question I ask over and over. Right. And my dad used to tell me when I was a little kid growing up to trust in God but tie up your camels. And so if you really want to make sure that things are safe, what, I did, what we did is direct two studies that were toxicity studies done with laboratory rats, mega dosing the mangosteen fruit in different concentrations to uh, a group of rats over a month. And uh, in macroscopic and microscopic examination of the tissues of the rats, there was nothing that showed any type of pathological uh, manifestation. The only change in behavior that was noted was that the rats were running out and sharing their mangosteen with the uh, rats. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to the next question. I think everybody's thinking of stockpiling the mangosteen right now. Is there a limit to how much we should be taking? Well, you know, there, with the rat studies, there were no toxic limits. Uh, when you do studies like this, you try and establish some dose at which the animal or the person that you're using with is going to have adverse effects. We didn't ever find that toxic level. So there is no toxic level. However, in minimum dosages, when someone is looking for a therapeutic effect, something's gone wrong with them and they're trying to get that in some way reversed through the assistance of the mangosteen, I recommend that because it has a half-life of four to six hours in the human body. In other words, it remains in the circulation for about four to six hours before half of it is gone, that it should be dosed three times a day. Now, that's uncomfortable to have to take something three times a day, but that's the fact. And you would start with at least one ounce per dose, 30 ml for those who may be in a different system than we have here. And you could go up from that. There is no upper limit. More may be better. It, in fact, appears to be that way in very serious conditions such as cancer and uh, major ailments. People take much more than one ounce three times a day. However, when you're looking for the benefits of prevention, a single ounce a day seems to be all that you need.